Good morning, this is Edward James Tagg, and today I'm channeling Mother Mary for my second day. So, you may know me from uh, my other groups. Um, I post on, on my own page and also on PASI, uh, which is a, a starseed group. But, um, so this is the second day that Mother Mary has decided to come through. And I always have a bath in the morning and then I talk to her and she'll tell me yes or no if she's coming through. And like I say, it's taken me 25 years, so this is new for me. And well, it's not new for me in the sense that I've had a verbal dialogue with her in my head for 25 years. So having Mother Mary working with me is very, very normal, but it's not normal for me to do this publicly. So anyway, um, moving right along. Yesterday, Mother Mary wanted to talk to me about uh, loved ones in the afterlife, and she talked about, as a result of COVID deaths, there are a lot of souls that have been transitioning over to the other side uh, at the moment, and people that are left behind are very worried, are they okay? And so there was a, a, lot, a lot of good information about that. Although the talk was um, short and sweet, um, she didn't want to go on too long. I will say hello to other people who join in and when they do. So um, now, as you know, I've also developed a technique. Well, Mary taught me the technique, and it's called precision clairvoyant bibliomancy. And for sure, I call it the book method, and I get pages and books um, told to me or shown to me. And this morning I said, well, Mother Mary, what do you want me to talk about? And so she said... It was difficult because it was the fourth group again, and there's a really good book at um, at the sixth position, a really another good book at the seventh position, and I was vacillating. And first I saw seven, but then I asked, and I thought it was going to be six, and I vacillated between six and seven. Then I checked, and again it was the sixth book, at page 137, and it's um. <clears throat> now I, whenever I show you these books, it doesn't mean that I'm promoting these particular books. Um, this is just how my angels communicate to me. It doesn't mean that I'm telling you that this is necessarily a book that you must read. That's not the issue. The issue is that they use these as a vehicle to communicate. And this is by John um, D. Martini called The Breakthrough Experience. And I'm going to try and prevent my camera from flipping my images so you can't read it. Anyway, so I don't think I will read from it because I... I got a um, a warning from Facebook about copyright, and I think maybe even I can't even read from a book because then I'm because then I'm breaking copyright law. So I'm not sure. So it's just talking. I'm just going to make reference to it. It's just talking about infinite intelligence, intelligence that governs the whatever. Um, you know, guidance. Um, humble ourselves to this intelligence uh the moment you know that we bloody blah infinite intelligence and we begin to share in it we acknowledge ourselves as you know blah blah, blah we acknowledge and start to receive guidance inspiration bloody blah, blah so anyway but that's what mother mary wants to talk about so now I'll get right into it, but I'll just give a bit of a, a heads up. Oh, hello, Radka. Thank you for joining in. Yeah, um, It's called Dr. John F. D. Martini, The Breakthrough Experience. Anyway, um, so now, um, it's pretty obvious that Mother Mary would choose this as a topic really, really early on. It's basically just like listening to God and then you think to yourself oh well, that sounds really overly simple but it's actually hugely important um, I suppose in the Catholic and Christian tradition that we've had for you know a couple of thousand years we've had um, people praying to God and they call that petitioning prayer you know when you petition or ask for something um, you know please dear God can I have this that and the other please dear God can you help me with my um, with my feelings or my loss or whatever you know can you you know help me um so but not many people actually listen and tap into 
their infinite intelligence. Now we're we we're, we're choosing to call God, you know, G O D, infinite intelligence, according to Doctor John D Martini. Um, but you know, people use the word like source, which I find funny because I like you know tomato sauce. But there's lots of funny words for God. But that's by the by. But um, yeah, all I'm saying is not many people know how to listen or how to how to access or how to you know check in. So anyway, I'm going to um, go into my little mini. It takes about 15 seconds or even less. It usually takes about two seconds. I just have to breathe and go into and bring Mother Mary through and just see um, what she's saying. Um, um, thank you, Radka. Okay, I should have done this earlier, but I will. Oh, hello, Christine. I have to, this is the hard part about channeling Mother Mary, is that when I'm talking to you on camera, I'm chit-chatty, and, and my vibration is not very high, it's kind of medium, it's not low, but it's medium, but to channel Mother Mary, I have to totally be a totally different person, and have to vacillate and go from here to, 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 to here, another position, where I have to breathe, and I have to raise my vibration, I could use beautiful music, but that's actually distracting. So it's actually quite hard. And then I've got to come back and tell you what Mother Mary says. And then I have to lower my vibration again to do that. So I have to chop and change, chop and change, chop and change. And doing that um, is going to take some discipline and learning on my part. So we'll just see how it goes. So just have patience, please. Okay. <clears throat> And you see the side of my head, which is not my pretty angle, so you'll just have to get used to it. So, And I'll have to get used to that as well. Okay. <coughs> um, dear God, please bless me. Um, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, um, please um, bring through Mother Mary and um, provide loving guidance for people who need to hear. Thank you, dear God. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. I've had a sore neck, so I have to shift down to rest my head because it's quite sore I've got a stiff neck okay okay so she comes through really really strongly and she said yes indeed Edward, this is mother mary we are here now the other thing she said earlier is that she will never say i and please be aware about this about mother mary she will never use the word i like i think or i want or i am she will never because she says they work as a collective. They're always a group, so we they always say we. Although it is Mother Mary talking to me, but they are always a collective group. They work together. Okay. She said, yes, indeed, Edward, this is Mother Mary. Um, we feel very strongly about this. Just hold a sec. Um, that's right, um, Edward. Um, that is correct. Um, we are concerned because people are not um, having access to God. That's what she's saying. Okay. Um, hold a sec. So, yes, Edward, people have so much at their disposal, but they are not taking advantage of it. Um, this is difficult, chopping and changing. But I'll, I'll, okay. Um, yes, there is a beauty at their disposable, at their disposal beyond wonderment. There is a beauty at their disposal beyond wonderment. God, strange language. Um, when they talk, it's like poetry. Okay. Um, yes, Edward, if they would listen, they would get a tremendous amount of guidance and help. Okay, let me go into details. Okay. This is actually quite hard, chopping and changing. It's it's just funny. It's weird. Now I know how other people feel they do this. I'm just going to, just going to take a little mini rest. Um, hold a sec. 
It's really hard shifting. Like when I'm in Mary, I'm back there, like on another dimension. It's weird and you kind of, I'm not in a trance, but I'm sort of slipping into like a meditation that goes really deep. And then when I talk to you guys, it's um, fluffy bunnies and it's just hard to come in and go out, go in and out. But I'll see what else comes just a minute. Um, their voice is really, really strong. Um, yeah, incredibly strong. Okay. Um, yes, Edward, um, we love people very much and we will help them. Um, sometimes these early sentences are like um, stoking a fire or, or getting a petrol engine ready and they're kind of warm-ups and then she starts getting deeper and heavier into it and when I chop and change then I kind of cut that flow. Um, so that's one of the challenges but I'll just go back in and see what she has to say. <clears throat> Um, so she just said, yes, indeed, Edward, we are concerned because people are not um, gaining access to this information. Now, she's just put a pause in there. And the, what I'm learning of what she's doing now is she doesn't always want to channel like everything. She wants me to stop and pause because I've been working with her for 25 years. So she kind of wants to be me to be her representative. And so now she's going to want me to give a little mini teaching on what she's talking about. And then I can go back. So uh, I will go back in. But so she kind of wants me to say that they're not saddened, but just for a very long time, they're just aware, strongly aware that there's this powerful beauty in the, in the universe. Call it God, inf infinite intelligence or consciousness but people are not taking advantage of that beauty and that wonderment that's available to them so um i think you know religion um talked about god but they did a lot of damage as well you know in the early days of the catholic church and so that fire hell and damnation and some of the bad stuff you know um i suppose what i'm trying to say is that people don't trust that there's anything there anymore or they even don't know or it's not that they don't know as they kind of have glimmerings of it and they watch a a movie and they feel fluffy ducks and happy inside but it's that it's that 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 John D Martini what he's talking about it's that that real power i mean i i do understand that there's two levels to this because there's the power of god who's the creator of the universe uh, that we can tap into and then there's also the angels like mother mary right here that act on god's behalf and speak the words and so there's kind of a confusing thing because if you meet some new excited christian they'll say oh god had a conversation with me yesterday and i had and, and spoke some words well they're kind of misled in a way because it's the angels like Jesus, Mary, Michael or Gabriel or whomever that they assume that role like um, parents to people on earth, like they're children. And I don't mean that in a demeaning way. I mean, they're very loving, like guides, angels, whatever you want to call them, you know, intercessors or intermediaries or watchers or whatever. So, you know, who do we talk to? Do we talk to the infinite intelligence or do we talk to these angels and treat them as our as our gods and they don't want us to do that they 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 stipulate quite strongly that you pray directly to god and then what you get back comes from um your guides um your spirit guides or your angels or what have you and they're the ones that sort of relay messages when you they're talking you think it's god talking but actually it's them so that's some of the confusion so if you're trying to get something powerful in the way of guidance or information or love or energy or state or state of being or anything whatsoever or that power, you do get that from the energy that created the origin of the universe. So there is a God. Um, 
I don't believe it's a man stroking his beard, you know, sitting up in the cloud. I don't personally believe that. That's just not what I've learned from Mother Mary. I, I studied quantum physics, and I don't mean to be little God and say God is just something in a physics textbook, you know, in a, in a petri dish in a science lab. No, I don't mean that. But God is an energy state of all-consuming power, love, and intelligence that is inside everything every molecule every bit of matter you know this glass you know god's in it um and it, it is that intelligence that john um, f d martini is talking about and it's that infinite intelligence that mother mary wants us to get access to and she's a, they are a little bit saddened because we're not getting access to that i mean sometimes i even forget i mean so you know and how do you get to God? Sometimes I've been watching birds outside, you know, in the trees. And I just, you can tap into that infinite intelligence. And it's really subtle and really soft. And the biggest problem for most people is their lives are really, really, really busy. So when your lives are just so hectic, you know, with social media and with COVID-19 and job interviews and worried about what's happening, you can put YouTube on and find the latest drama. You know, so I used to check in every day to find out, you know, what's happening with the Ukraine war against Russia. You know, are they OK? And I used to check in every day and I haven't done that for a while. So there's always something that can distract us and take us away. But coming back to what Mother Mary was talking to, there is a power in the universe, and there's so much love. I mean, it's beyond anything. You know, if you can, if you find a way to tap into it, and see this infinite meaning. You know, like if you're struggling, if someone's died during COVID nineteen, you're having a problem with a job interview, or you're having an argument with your neighbour or your boss, or you know your sister, uh, or you're grieving the loss of a parent. There's this quiet energy that is so full of love and willing to raise you up and willing to um, make you see the best possible version of your circumstance and your personality and your future and the best possible plan for you, like a plan. So that's what it's like when you tap into that infinite intelligence. There's almost like a universal plan that moves you forward into the best possible version of the, your future. Okay. Um, Mary's telling me I've talked enough and she wants to, me to go back in and see what else she has to say. So I won't relay all the messages because when she says, yes, Edward, that is correct, um, you understand well. She's just... That's how she warms me up, and then she goes in. So let's just see what she has to say. She said it's beautiful to relay these messages. Okay. Um, yes, Edward, we are overjoyed. We live um, lives of deep um, bliss here. Well, she didn't want to say deep bliss, but it was um, deep was not the word. It's the only word that she could channel through me that I knew at the time. But um, incredible bliss um, here, that means on the other dimension where they live. She's kind of um, gone into a pause. She's used some words. Um, she's come back to the suffering again. There is so much suffering in the world. Um, let me go into this and see what she wants to say. Okay, well, she's kind of brought, brought that to a pause. Um, she reiterated and repeated the same things. Uh and I mean, there may be someone out there that's seeing me for the first time and saying, well, is this Edward guy genuine? And I can say that I've been doing this for 25 years and I strongly know what it's like to have Mother Mary's words, um, her, her actual physical talking through my brain. And then when she tails off and goes into, she'll stop and pause. There's a reason for that. So 
it's not me doing it's a hundred percent definite independent from me as an experience okay um Um, hold a sec, I just want to see how she wants to work with me, trying to negotiate with her and then um, people listening and my thoughts. It just takes, it's just a lot for me to, it's like playing pad, pad what do you call it, pad tennis, table, table tennis, oh sorry, okay. Um, just a minute, because I want to find out more what else she's going on about. Now she's um, showing me images and she's saying trees. So she's giving techniques now. Um, just a minute. She said, yes, indeed, Edward, there are beautiful techniques of, of how people can connect. She didn't use the word how, just of how they, yeah, for people to connect. She's saying, yes, um, like I did when I was in Dunedin, because I spent a lot of time in trees when I was in Dunedin. Okay. She's saying, yes, just as we were, we are showing you right now, we recommend that you recommend people to do the same. And they showed me an image of when I was... You don't have to hug trees like become a tree hugger. That's not what I'm preaching. But um, I used to touch leaves just very um, lovingly and gently, just sort of stroke the leaves. Sometimes leaves are furry and sometimes we leaves are waxy. And when you touch a, a waxy leaf, your fingers slip off and it's just a really gentle, beautiful experience. So when you, you don't have to stop at a tree, but when you walk past a tree, if you touch them, I suppose what Mary's teaching me is that you do tap in kind of like an aura or an energy field of the tree and particularly when you touch it when you get the tactile experience there's an added experience and an interchange of energy between you and the trees okay let's just see what else she wants to talk about Someone started up with some power tools on the other side of the road. I don't know how far it is away, but it, it might be a bit distracting. I live in a real power tool crazy neighborhood, but um, now she's showing me something interesting. Just a minute. And now she's showing me meditation. Now, this could be a problem because I don't want to suggests that if Mother Mary suggests that you meditate that you're going to be similar to a Buddhist or a yogi or something like that she doesn't mean that intention because lots of religions and lots of different belief systems meditate but they showed me a man what well, could be a woman but um, a person meditating um, quite high quite high altitude it's just the image I had um, it's an image I have um, from a beautiful movie called the black narcissus which has got Deborah Court Kerr, I think. And it was a mountaintop. And they showed a person meditating. But that's just the image they just used for me personally. Um, so she recommends that you stroke leaves of trees when you walk by them. And that you sit um, when you're in nature on a mountaintop. Um, specifically, I think. Well, I, I, not, I think from my spiritual teacher, I was told that the reason you go on top of a mountain is because um, there's less magnetic um, frequencies or EMFs, um, EMF frequencies from cell phone towers or whatever, but at the top of a mountain, the energy is better for meditating. Okay. <clears throat> this power tool that's going off in the background is starting to distract me a little bit, so I'll see if I can continue or not, but just a minute.
So she's saying, yes, Edward, when you see these images um, in meditation, you can tap into infinite consciousness and you can um, feel God's love or God's energy in this method. So what she's saying to me is that when you go into meditation, um, you might see images. First, you might just see colors or um just sometimes I used to see purple or green for whatever reason, just like a, a black, uh, a blackness that became purple. And um, then I might see like a Christ um, star, like a star or just light in the middle of like a black nothingness. So if you're a meditator and you've had experiences meditating, what Mary's showing me and explaining is that um, when you start to see Real simple images, just like a cross, or well, not even a cross, even just a light, or even just a fuzzy, um, you know, white noise. When you penetrate that through your third eye, or just in the image when you're meditating, it's really, really good to have an expectation or to call out. You don't have to use words, just just to have a. I don't even like to use the word intention, but she's recommending that you sort of penetrate and intend and call out and recognize. Um, the essence of of this supreme intelligence, call it you know consciousness or God, and seek to make kind of a connection. So, a lot of times when people meditate, they just go blank. They're kind of going through for that nothing experience. Um, bright purple, golden light, and the black nothingness too. Yeah, thank you, Vladka. Yeah, it's lovely. So, what sh what Mary's saying is that when you meditate, don't just go for that nothing bland experience and that, and that's okay because when meditators when meditation teachers train people to meditate what they're doing is they're dealing with a lot of westerners that need to chill out basically from a lot of stress from their daily grind of their job so the best they can hope to achieve is just to get into this calm space so they talk about the nothing or this empty space or this nirvana or whatever but Mother Mary is not intending that. What she's suggesting is that um, early on, like within the first minute or two, when you start to see um, fuzziness or light or something in your meditation in here, make a penetrate, that's, that's a bad word, penetrate, but seek or search or dive in or quest or ask um, to meet and to make a mutual reciprocal arrangement or, or communication or connection with this infinite intelligence and ask it because if you just go blank you know like i'm trying to get trying to get into the nothing the infinite intelligence is god can't meet with that because you're not calling you're not questing you're not asking for anything you're not trying to have a relationship so in your meditation it's like a relationship experience try and um, flip or try and connect or try and merge or try and reach or try and dive in or try to quest or try to call out um, in a way that that infinite intelligence of God can meet with you. Now you do have to be very very careful of course because you've got to bring up your protection because there could be any lower astral entities that will say well hey you know here's someone here that wants to have a game or we'll play them and we'll trick them. So you've got to be very careful when you meditate and protect yourself um, and not be anxious um, and do it in, in a way that's um, safe for you. So um, let's see if there's anything else that Mary wants to talk about. She's saying, yes, Edward, you understand very, very well. We will send you other images now. Okay, just a minute. Um, when you get all those comments on the left-hand side of the screen, does that mean that, because I can't see my face because all the comments are in way, so I don't know whether or not you can see my face because all the comments, but it doesn't matter. I just get confused. Anyway, because I, I do this a lot. Okay, all right. Well, this is getting really interesting now. She said, yes, indeed, Edward, there is um, an infinite amount of love that you can get from your um, dogs and animals. Um, so what she's saying now is one of the ways to um, tap into infinite consciousness or intelligence is actually through your pets. Like if you've got a dog, 
or it could be anything. It could be a squirrel or animal, but particularly um, dogs or cats or animals that you can stroke and touch. And when you, particularly, you know, when you stroke a dog and they smile at you and they, they're all happy, you can utilize them. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I understand, Radka. Thanks for that. So you can utilize that experience to talk. Now, I don't mean talk to God through the dog. God, dog. <laughs> I don't mean that. So don't misread me and get me wrong, because that's not what I intend. Don't all start telling me, oh, Edward, I had a lovely conversation with my cat yesterday. I think my cat must be God. And I don't mean that. What, what, but what you must understand is that God is the infinite creator energy that is behind the birth or the, ge or the genetics or the creation or the energy that is in your pussycat and your dog that lives with you at home. So when you're stroking your dog, behind the dog. Now, when I say behind the dog, what do you mean when I say behind? It's really weird because when you have spiritual enlightenment, as, as I did, uh, you don't just look at an object anymore, like this cup. I don't look at this cup anymore, the dog, or you you see as an ideology or as or as a as a understanding or as a as a principle, the energy or the state that is supremely perfect and powerful that is behind it, that is the causal maker or the causal initiator, and that's the God energy. That's coming through your dog. So God, God is is working through your dog, and people are also working through um, themselves to get to you as well. God, sorry, God is working through people to get to you. And if you're in this parallel consciousness awareness that meditation gives you, then when you stroke the dog, you're not just stroking Trixie or. Fifi or Lulu or Lula or whatever, you're not stroking them anymore. You're stro stroking and having experience with the creator energy that gave rise or, or initiated or gave birth to it or that is behind it. I hope this makes sense. But yeah, it's very important. So anyway, when you stroke your dog, when you stroke your dog, you're getting a you're getting a unconditional, loving God experience. When the dog wags its tail you can say a prayer, you can say thank you, <laughs> thank you God for giving me my dog, <laughs> thank you God dog, <laughs> thank you God for my dog, <laughs> you, get <the> idea. <laughs> you get the idea, I hope you get the idea, so try and have a, a joyful experience with your animals and just you know pray and say thank you God for this energy, this unconditional love that you created that has, the I mean if you think about the number of people that have pets, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> If you think about the number of people that have pets, it's a powerful arrangement. You think the way God set everything up, that we have pets, and they just give us so much love. Um, and it's 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 powerful, and it's a God connection. It's a God experience. So we're very lucky. Okay, excuse me. Normally in my videos I cry, but today I'm laughing. So, okay. Right, okay, let's see what else he wants to show me. Now she's showing me, um, let me just get, I'm um, talking to her, just hold a sec. Um, yes, Edward, we want people to um, interact with other people with more um, calm and care, um, uh, Calm, kindness, and care. Uh, she used different words in a different order. Yeah, okay. So now what she's showing me is that when you interact with people, she showed me particularly um, how you hold someone's hand. So I know when you go in for a handshake, it's like this. But she's recommending that someone, when someone puts their hand out or when you go to connect with them, that you hold your their hand like on the top, like this, and one hand underneath, or like like this and like that, in a kind of a caring gesture. And she wants people um, to be more caring when they meet, pe meet people. Now, you don't need to go to um, a thrift store or in the supermarket or, or you know, down the job centre and just ho hold people's hands in this comforting 
um, religious kind of fashion. I don't mean that. Well, you could if you want to. But you've also got to be practical and not <clears throat> overwhelm people that they'll say, what's this religious or spiritual nutter holding my hand in this loving way? I'm not ready for this right now. But if you know someone or if they're, they're your friend or you, you know they trust you, when you hold their hand underneath like that and put your other hand over the top uh, and look into your into their eyes and tilt your head, you know, to the left or right, and you lovingly intend telepathically to send them comfort and care and sincerity, do that with lots of love. And when you do that, God will be using you as a vessel to bring unconditional love through, but you'll actually get a lot from that experience. Like The funny thing is that when you care for someone and you touch someone's hand in just precisely that fashion, um, you might think that you're doing something and, and you know they're going to benefit from you being nice. But actually it's reciprocal. And the, the love, actually what they're showing me in my mind is that the angels are standing, their guides, their spirit guides are going to be standing behind them. They're going to come closer. And as they do that, you're going to pick up on their energy uh, that their guides are sending through. So you're going to get more of that love. So the love is cyclical. It's, you know, the more you intend love and care and unconditional love to that person that you're showing compassion towards, reciprocally, reciprocally, you benefit and receive unconditional love from their guides and ultimately um, from the love of the infinite universe conscience that is behind behind them that's coming to you so it's reciprocal i mean i i've sometimes done that for a whole entire day i said what would it be like to be similar to jesus or whomever and i just you know walked around and very 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 calm walked into shops met complete strangers and held their hand and listened to them and sent them love and compassion and did, did it all telepathically um in just a very loving way uh and i I mean, people people benefited from it, sure. But I received a huge amount of divine grace from operating like that in any given day. So you don't have the you don't have to do the same as me. I'm not, that's not what I'm recommending. But try it. Just you know, one day when you walk into the shop, you're just going to meet some one person, and you're going to hold them their hand in a calm fashion. You could even pray about it. You could even say, God, you know, today can you deliver me someone who needs kindness and compassion? And I want to hold their hand and I want to just listen intently. I'm not going to do a lot of talking. I just want to um, send them unconditional kindness and care. And then see what happens. You can do it as your own personal spiritual experience um, experiment. And then feel the love that comes from their guides and from them and from the infinite intelligence that is infused in everything flowing to you. So I think you understand what I mean. Uh, let's see what else um, um, Mother Mary wants to send me. My neck is a little bit sore, so I might I might um, finish this soon. So let's just see what else there is. Um, Um, yes, indeed, but we also want people to talk to God and ask for things and quest um, for an understanding. And so what she's saying, and particularly at night time, um, and, you, and I, they show me looking to the stars. So some people, they kneel at their bedside, you know, like when we were young. But what she's showing me is um, looking at night time in the dark to the stars. Uh, you can either do that in a meditation or um, you can go outside to the stars, and when you um, quest and and look out to the you know yonder furthest stars in the blackness, um, kind of ask for um, for things or have your needs met, but also for an understanding. Because a lot of the problems with prayer, uh, when people are asking for things, it's not that God is not answering your prayer because people. I suppose I can get like a hundred people ask me, Edward, you know, I pray, but I never get my needs met or I never get it answered. You know, what's going on? What's happening? Well, here's the thing. Humans have got karma. They've got life learning lessons. They've got struggles. 
they've got um, childhood upbringings with um, very rigid, um, defined, or you know, infused mindsets. So when they're praying that well, God will remove the situation, will give you money, or give you this, or give you that, or give you a new relationship. The problem is, is that it's wiser to seek and ask for understanding. Like you could, sometimes I say to my angels, I say to, you know, why am I having this experience? Um, and I think that's that's wiser because when people don't have a good enough understanding, they just want something to end or they want something, but they don't see the bigger picture. They don't understand that, oh, how can I say this, that... Sometimes we have to endure certain experience. Sometimes we don't. Is that there's that is that famous Saint Francis uh, prayer? I think it's like, please, dear God, give me the power to understand. On and 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 if I can't, you know, change things. And I I don't remember the prayer. I'm sure you know it's famous. I think it's yeah. I forget. I think it's called the Saint Francis prayer. The point I'm trying to make is that. Um, it's not always clear. And that's when people say, God acts in mysterious ways. And I don't mean that facetiously. I don't. But part of the problem is human understanding and karma and enduring experience and why we have things and why we don't have things and why we have relationships, why we have the parents we do. And and so when people are praying, often they um, get caught up in um, the small details and I don't mean small details I mean in a in a flippant way but they get caught up in their circumstances without seeing the bigger picture um I was going through something recently uh and I thought a friendship or a relationship had to come to an end but when it when it didn't end and it continued on I was surprised and I thought well okay I could have prayed for this either to end or not end but when it carried on, I, I had more of, of a deeper understanding. There was an emotional lesson and something about, um, it was it was about, I, th I, think, I thought I had to let go of something um, as a means of just like, you know, being strong and moving on. But actually I didn't. I could, I could bring it into my life and still have that person around. And there was still love present and there was something I had to learn. So it's not always easy to understand when you're in it. You have to wait for the journey to flow and to carry on and... Um, yeah, I'm getting a bit caught up in my words, but I think I should finish it there because I've got a sore neck, uh, and I'm a little bit tired from from this. Um, it's easy to bring through Mother Mary. Um, this chopping and changing, and rising and falling by vibration. Um, it it takes some getting used to. So excuse me. I hope some of that helps. So just to summarize, um. To summarize, pray more because it's really beneficial. Um, there is an in infinite intelligence that is behind everything. Um, you know, stroke leaves on a tree, um, stroke your dog, um, stroke people's hands lovingly and caringly, uh, and then talk to God and ask for things or ask for an understanding um, and also to create that, that reciprocal arrangement or that reciprocal relationship. Because it's all accessible um, for you and to you. So it's all there. Um, just to remember to do it. So I hope that helps. Um, like I said, my neck's a bit sore. And I'm a bit tired from from um, talking too much. I don't like talking. I need to drink, drink more water as well. So bye for now. And I hope that helps. And I'll be doing these regularly. And I now have a group which is called Mother Mary Channeling. Uh, and if you want to get into that group, it's open to everybody. So bless you all and um, pray to the infinite intelligence in the universe. Bye.